Welcome to a tutorial about Antoine. In this video, I'm going to show an example of managing an inventory with arrays. So as a quick review, whenever we're working in SugarCube, we're always, always also working in JavaScript, which means any of the data structures available in JavaScript, we can also use within SugarCube. One of these is an array. An array is a sequence of values where the order is important, and we access individual values within that structure based on their position, often called simply their index. We saw in a previous video how we can use the for macro in when working with an array to access each thing within an array. Programming terms, we call that iterating over the range. Range simply means the entire collection of things. So in this video, we're interested in managing inventory which is a pretty common task many people find within Twine, especially in role-playing games or other games. We might have collections of things or different knowledge that we're kind of gathering or collecting over the course of some interactive story. So in this case, I'm gonna present kind of an example where we can pick up things, add it to an inventory, and then we can then remove those things based on the showing of that inventory. So. Let me kind of play what this is and we'll kind of talk through how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and build and play. And then we notice we have three different objects right here, odd key, twisted branch, painted stone. I'm gonna go ahead and just click on all three of these and notice they disappear and click on continue. And then it says you check over what you have collected and it shows the three things that exist within my inventory and in parentheses right here is the ability to remove them. I'm gonna go ahead and click on these and then notice that they disappear one thing at a time. So we're managing inventory. First we're picking up things, adding to inventory, then we're removing, taking away from an inventory. And the inventory in this case is simply an array but I'm using kind of two different functionalities. First, I am pushing things to an array, which is what we describe as adding to the end of an array. And I'm also using something called delete from an array. Delete is a special method added by SugarCube to arrays within JavaScript. And I'll show you how that works in just a moment. So let's start right here. I'm using three different usages of the link replace macro. So as a quick review of how this works, we can replace whatever the link was with something else. In this case, I am using the run macro again, and I am running inventory push, and then pushing these to the end of the array each time. Now as a quick thing review over here, I have a passage called story init. This is story initialization, so setting up some values. Remember that story init, among other special passages, have special meaning to SugarCube. In this case, this passage will always be run before the starting passage. So I'm setting up inventory to an empty array. Notice it doesn't have any commas, just has it, doesn't have anything of it in it other than it being an array. And then in this right here, I am pushing values to that array. So again, using the run macro, which allows us to run a single line of JavaScript where we don't necessarily care about the output, so we're not setting something or saving some resulting value. The other thing of note in particular is I'm using this slash right here after these lines. So you may have noticed when I ran this, it didn't add any extra lines after the replace. I'm using this to continue one line after another. So in some cases where we're managing white space, the kind of the space between different things, we can use this to run one line after another. So in this case, these lines are running after every single run macro, and I'm combining those lines together. So depending on what you click on right here, you will be then adding to that inventory. So we're managing it by pushing things to an array. Now over here in inventory, we're doing something slightly more complex. So again, I'm using this right here to manage my white space. So right here, we are running the lines together, one line into the next, into the next. And then I'm doing something fairly complex right here. So first we're showing kind of an itemized list right here. That's where this little asterisk comes from. Then we're using entry and entry is from this line right here. Now in a previous video, I talked about one of the ways we can use the for macro is working with the range special keyword within SugarCube. And range of course simply means all the values in the structure. So we often describe in programming iterating over a range, or in other words, processing data or working through data one thing after another after another, and range simply means all of it. 
So for entry range inventory simply means move through everything that's in the inventory one thing at a time. As you're moving through, assign that particular value to entry. So inside this loop right here, we're saying entry, so whatever we picked up, and then in parentheses is link replace again. So this says remove, and then right here we have the run macro again, and then this time we're using delete. Delete is a method added by Sugarcube to JavaScript when working with arrays. It looks through an array and will remove an entry in the array based on the corresponding value. So if it matches, it's going to remove it. Keep in mind, this doesn't exist in JavaScript. This exists in which Sugarcube adds to arrays. So I'm saying delete right here. And then to show the refresh thing, I'm using the go to macro to go back to inventory, which is the current passage we're looking at. So anytime we click on remove, we're simply revisiting the same passage again and again and again. And then of course, this is all link replace. So once we click on it, it's going to replace all of this with the stuff inside of it, which is nothing or a blank space. And of course, we're losing that every time we're going to inventory every time. So as shown, if we build and play again, then we can add various things. And of course, where order is important, right here, Twisted Branch was clicked on first, Painted Stone was clicked on second. Anytime I remove, we refresh by going back to the same passage and removing again. And notice there was a tiny little blip there, and I'll show you this again. Look, look very, very closely right here. Boop, and then it's kind of gone. And we see the link replace macro being run and then the go to macro being run immediately afterwards. So in this case, we can manage a kind of simple inventory. Again, working with arrays. Keeping in mind, an array is where the sequence or order of things is important. We access them by their index or position. We can also work with the for macro to access things, iterate over some range. Range, of course, is a special keyword within Sugarcube, meaning the whole collection of things. So we can use the for macro to iterate over, move through the range of things, and we can then use each corresponding entry or position or value within that structure to create something where we can also remove entries from an array using the delete method added by Sugarcube to arrays within JavaScript. So in this particular example, we can kind of manage the inventories. We can push some things and delete some things or add or remove based on some inventory represented as an array. Now, of course, arrays are not the only thing we can use for inventory. As I'll show in a future video, we could organize this in a very different way. Our approaches, though, are the same. We add things to an inventory, remove things from an inventory, show things in an inventory. We'll talk about how we implement that with other structures in another video. But at least for this video, working with arrays is not that difficult. We push things, we delete things, and we can work with the for macro to show things, iterate over, so range the entire collection of data within Sugarcube 2.36. Thanks for watching.